fellow crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSassDM.com. Welcome back for another Yeepy for Yana video. A few weeks ago, I came across a video by my friend BB Cameron where she demonstrated the new Nuvo Crackle Mooses from Tonic Studios. I was very intrigued and inspired by BB's video and the mooses, of course, and I really wanted to give this product a try myself. The mooses arrived several days ago and I couldn't wait to open the jars and begin playing with this new fun product. In this video, I will share my first take on these mooses and will show you several card ideas I made using them. These add metallic dimensional details to your craft projects. They are currently available in eight colors and I have five colors to show you in this video. This first one I'm holding is Egyptian gold. And this is what it looks like on craft once dry. Next one is Russian white. This ended up being my favorite color of all. I used it for the three cards I'm sharing towards the end of this video. The next one is celestial blue. And this is what it looks like on craft once dry. I actually find that I like these mousses best when used tone on tone. So white on white light blue on light blue cardstock, and so on. Next one is wrought iron. This is another favorite of mine. It looks stunning when used on black cardstock. I made a bunch of black backgrounds and I'm saving them for future use. And the last one I have is ivory coast. And this is what this color looks like on craft once dry. Very pretty, absolutely gorgeous mousses with fantastic texture. I've already prepped several panels. I cut my Nina Desert Storm cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and taped several stencils from Simon Says Stamp onto my panels. I used washi tape to temporarily tape them in place. I've placed the tonic easy clean mat on my work surface to protect it while I apply these mousses. I'm going to gently open the jar. There's foil covering the mousse and I'm going to carefully cut it using a craft knife so that I can peel the foil back and then use it to close the jar when I'm done. It is best to apply this mousse using a palette knife and so I'm using mine. I have a palette knife from Tonic Studios to apply a generous layer of this mousse and this is color Ivory Coast. On the back of the jar, there are some instructions and the instructions read as follows. For a textured finish, apply with a spatula. If applied using a stencil, a raised effect will occur. And this is what we're doing here. We are applying this mousse using a stencil. Ensure a thick, even layer is applied to create a crackled effect. I'm not applying too thick of a layer. The thicker you go, the bigger the cracks you will get. But I would not go too thick as the mousse might actually fall off the paper if the cracks become too big. Now this product is designed to work on a porous surface, meaning paper, cardstock, chipboard, untreated wood. It will not work on acetate, plastic, glass, or any other non-porous surface. With the mousse applied, I'm going to wipe my craft knife and wipe my mat clean using a baby wipe. And then carefully remove the stencil. I'm being gentle here and going very slowly as I don't want to mess up my background. Off camera, I immediately took my stencil to the bathroom and washed it with warm water. By the way, this is stained glass stencil from Simon Says Stamp. For the next background, I'm using Egyptian gold mousse and Simon Says Stamp Flora stencil. I'm repeating the same steps, carefully opening the jar and applying the mousse onto my paper. Now this mousse, this particular color, needed a little bit of mixing, so I quickly mixed it in the jar using my palette knife as I noticed some separation. I was able to mix it to an even consistency without any problems, so I don't think that having this separation occur in the jar is a problem. I think that's okay. Here's what this background looks with the stencil removed. Very pretty, I think. For the next background, I used Russian white mousse and Simon Says Stamp Solar Burst stencil. 
Again, I repeated all of the steps and applied the mousse generously onto the background. This was my favorite mousse color, and I think it is going to look stunning on any color cardstock. Now, these mousses, by the way, are opaque, so no matter what color paper you use underneath, they are going to cover it completely. For this last background, I used Celestial Blue Mousse in Simon Says Stamp Square Stencil. It is best to leave your background to dry and crackle overnight. Mine were dry and ready to go in about three hours, although I did leave them overnight as recommended. Drying time does depend on how thick a layer you apply onto your surface. Now this was filmed the next day. Like I mentioned, I left the backgrounds to dry overnight. I also made a bunch more backgrounds. I tried all five mousse colors and I also tried using other cardstock colors. Once the backgrounds dried, they curled up. I was very surprised and I was even afraid to uncurl and flatten the paper as I was afraid the mousse would come off the paper. But it didn't. This mousse is very nice and flexible and unless you have very large cracks, the product stays put on your porous surface. I love the backgrounds I got, absolutely wonderful texture and absolutely nothing like I have in my stash. Now because these curled up so much, I needed to find a way to flatten them. I cut scrap cardstock to four by five and a quarter inch panels and I adhered four panels together using glue to create a sturdy chipboard like piece. I figured that that would help flatten the paper and use that to adhere my backgrounds too. I also used that to add dimension to my cards later. Here I have one of the backgrounds adhered and I just used my scissors and cut any background axis off. I did not use my paper trimmer as I was sure it wouldn't cut through five layers of cardstock and I really did not want to risk it. On the right hand side of the screen, I have a few additional backgrounds drying and that is my mini Misty and a coaster sitting on top, applying pressure to the backgrounds. Here's a look at those backgrounds. You can see how absolutely gorgeous they turned out. I cannot even pick a favorite. I love all of them. All of these were created using stencils from Simon Says Stamp and I have all of the stencil names listed in the video description below. To create cards, I adhered my crackled backgrounds to A2 white side folding card bases using my chipboard like panels. For the first card, I white heat embossed a Miss You sentiment from Kathy Zilski Miss You Missy stamp set. I thought that using light pink cardstock, and this is Hero Arts Peony cardstock, worked really well with that pearlescent white color of the mousse and the white card background. I treated my paper with an anti-static powder. I stamped the image in clear embossing ink. I used ink from Hero Arts. I covered this with white detail embossing powder and heat set it using my heat tool. Next, I used a coordinating die and cut the embossed rectangle out in my die cutting machine. Now, sometimes when I die cut a heat embossed image, the embossing powder flakes off and I end up having gaps on my image. It is frustrating, but it is something that I can fix using a white jelly roll pen. Before I do that, though, I like to reheat the powder anywhere where it looks like it's about to come off. And then I use my white pen and just draw the white line where it is missing. Another option, of course, is to die cut first and heat emboss later. For my next card, I heat embossed a sentiment that reads, you're one of a kind, and I used Simon Says Stamp Kind Flowers stamp set, and again, the same peony card stuck from Hero Arts. For my next card, I stamped Mercy in Twirling Tutu Ink from Kathy Zelsky All the Thanks stamp set and cut it out using a coordinating die. And this reads, thank you very much in French. Next, I used glue and adhered my die cut sentiments onto the cards. I did add four layers of that same cardstock I used to flatten my backgrounds. I just used coordinating dies to cut additional scrap layers and adhered them all together using glue. This is an alternative to using fun foam, but it does make the card significantly heavier as cardstock is heavier than foam. But if you don't have fun foam, this is a good option. 
I used Nuvo Drops in Glass White to embellish my one-of-a-kind card. And for the other two cards, I used sequins from Simon Says Stamp Girls Best Friends Sequin Mix Set. I still have loads of backgrounds left over from my experimenting, and I have them saved for future projects. I hope you found this video useful, and you will give this idea a try if you haven't already. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you guys are making. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye!